Tim, welcome to Questioning the Manager. So, have you needed to adjust your approach? Because some would say Europe is very leveraged on China. Uh, no, we haven't changed our approach at all, actually, far from it. Um, because, in fact, uh, it's clearly an impact sort of from a global growth perspective in terms of China slowing and so on, and what the impact on that is uh, to global growth uh, chances and so on. But in point of fact, the way that we've been positioned is for a world of low growth anyway. Um, and the other important thing about China is that what's happening in China is that maybe there's an industrial slowdown that's going on there, but they're also in the process of transitioning the Chinese economy away from a sort of pure industrial and investment-led economy into a more consumer-led economy, which may help uh, one or two of the European companies, uh, European consumer-related companies, which is where we have exposure. So we haven't had to adjust anything, although obviously we're keeping a close eye on it. Okay, now... When we say Europe at the moment, people are probably thinking of autos. Do you have any exposure to autos or auto components? Uh, we have a lot of auto components, um, but we have no auto manufacturers. Um, so we had no exposure to Volkswagen itself, um, which was obviously hit by um, the scandal that broke the other day in terms of them, their sort of Vorsprung durch Lügen uh, approach as opposed to Vorsprung durch Technik. Um, but the actual technique side of it, they're going to have to go to the component suppliers to try to make sure that they've got parts that do not only make the car easier to drive, but it means it doesn't kill us all with its pollution, um, but it also, in terms of the smart car and smarter cars, in terms of um, uh, anticipating uh, what somebody else is doing on the road and all the rest of it, which is where the European car uh, component manufacturers are actually leading anyway. Um, so, yes, they've been hit, as you'd expect, um, but we're not panicking on that. That's probably more of an opportunity than a risk at this stage. Would you say the portfolio is looking expensive? Um, I mean, inevitably, yes. I mean, there are parts of the portfolio which have become quite expensive, but the actual premium you're paying for significantly better growth is really not that high. Um, so I think that's the crucial thing to look at, is when you look at the spread of holdings we have, things like Deutsche Post, which have not performed for the last 12 months, are not actually expensive stocks at this stage. Whereas inevitably, a name like Essilor, which has been a good performer, is looking more expensive at this stage. But Essilor has got very good growth in the years going forward. So I think, again, it goes back to the crucial point about sticking with that patience that we have with these good long-term growth opportunities. And yes, one or two of them do look a little bit expensive in the short term. But if that growth continues to come through, as I think it will, uh, then the market will continue to be happy to pay that premium for that quality of that growth. Some commentators might perceive Europe as having a rise in extreme politics. What are the market implications for this? Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty rich, you know, coming from the UK, um, you know, where obviously you've got pretty extreme politics, you know, on, on the uh, right wing with um, um, Farage and that crowd, um, and then the left wing with um, Corbyn. You know, um, so, you know, Corbyn's approach uh, is pretty radical. Um, you've had that approach in Europe as well. You had uh, Hollande going in there in France and saying, I'm going to run the economy in a different way and so on. He's had to come back to the centre ground pretty quickly. Um, so that's exactly what's happened when somebody's tried to sort of go off the sort of rather boring centre ground of politics, which is the case in Europe. You saw exactly the same in Greece, that Tsipras and Varoufakis wanted to go off to the left. They wanted to write off that debt, but they could not do that and stay in the euro. Um, so when it actually came to sort of running the economy properly, they were forced to toe that sort of central line. Um, it, there will be political stress in Europe. I think there's going to be political stress in every single country. I mean, look at uh, Trump, look at what's going on in America and everything else. There's plenty of scope for protest votes. Um, but at the end of the day, I think uh, there's very little variance that can actually happen in the reality of the situation of how a modern economy is run because of the way that they're structured and the amount the economies of debt that's within those economies. So there will be noise, it'll be a field day for media, who will love every bit of it and all the rest of it, but the reality is, is that I suspect that not too much will change. Tim Stevenson, thank you. Thank you.